It is estimated that non-communicable diseases account for 27% of all deaths suffered by Kenyans. That's equivalent to almost 100,000 people per year. This is according to the World Health Organization. Now, today's edition of Maishani Health will focus on non-communicable diseases. In this episode, we head to the county of Meru, which according to statistics has the highest prevalence of cancer. We'll be talking to people on the streets of Meru town and we'll also bring you case studies about non-communicable diseases, including cancer. We'll also later on on the show host expert panelists and Wanainchi in a town hall meeting to discuss more of the same. We also get a view from the Ministry of Health Command Center with the Cabinet Secretary. Motala Mukosia spent some time with the people and documented the following stories. We are in the great county of Meru and today we are here for one thing and that is Maisha Me Health Program. On this episode we are going to talk about non-communicable diseases. So we're going to talk to the common Manainchi of Meru County, talk to the professionals and also the leadership of this great county. Remember this is Maisha Me Health Program. My name is Mtalam Kosia. Maisha Me Health. Maisha Me Health. Maisha ni health. Maisha ni health. Maisha ni, maisha ni health. Maisha ni, maisha ni health. So today we are at Meru County in Kinoru and we are meeting Mze Laban Kaburu. Mze Laban Kabulu has had a journey with cancer and he is going to share with us his journey. Nilikuwa hospitali kwa ka, kwa shughuli zangu za kawaida sasa hivi matibabu ya 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 kawaida kawaida. Sasa ndio nilikuja kuhudua kuna kitu inaendelea kwa mwili yangu isiyo ya kawaida. Nikaenda nikaeleza daktari Hei ndaktari haka niambia hili ya symptoms ni sa cancer. Hata nifanyia yaani test. Sasa haka nipatia ndeti, sasa kuenda kufanyua test. Na hili ya test, na hito wa urology. Iso hati kutokea, nikambiwa ni cancer, lakini ya tokea hiko stenji. Hiko stenji ya chini. Haijaenda mbali sana. Haka niambia hili ya sasa utafanya, tutakutuma Nairobi, KU. Wendo kufanyua rendu therapy. Hai ni kaacha kushangaa, nitapata pesa wapi. Ndaktara haka niambia si kona nini, kona NHF. Haka muambia ndiyo. Haka niambia sasa, hiyo ndiyo utatumia, ikusaindie. Lakini hita kusaindia sana, nilasima utakuwa na pesa yako. Kwa sababu, watakuwa kikulipia, hile ma sections utafanyua rendu therapy. Kwa hivyo, watakulipia hitu, hiyo tu, hakuna kitu ngini watakufanyia. Hei, ni kaanza kusangaa, ni tapata pesa wapi kwa sababu huku. Hata ikiwa ni tafanyua hiyo nini, ni taenda huko. Si nasume ni tafata, ni tafata nyumba ya kurara, ni tafakura, transport. Na saingini wameandikiwa mandawa, na ni huu tanunua. Kwa sababu NHF wa yosu kukulipia. Inakulipia two sections. Sile unafanyua. Ni kamalisa isi so sections. Silikuwa za siku utarathini na sita. Ni karundi hapa meru. Sasa si, si kusema kwa sababu ni meenda huko, hile mgonjo ime maalisika kabisa, hapana. Lazima utakuja huku na ushurike mana mandawa. Eh? Na hiyo mandawa utakuwa kinunua mwenyewe. Na saingine hata una kazi. Na naendanga hospitali wa kemo. Na andikiwa mandawa, na kama kuna picha, NHF na nisaindia na... Iyo masekisho ni nilipia zote na ni pesa mingi. Zata mna mimi nashurika na isi zingine za ndawa, sa picha, matumisi yawa mengine. Nataka mtu hawe, anaenda, aende hospitali mapema, aende angaliwe. Na asiwe na nini na 
Yaani asifishe. Aenda ona daktari na daktari amoresha vile anasikia na simpishe. Ili daktari amfanyie test. Aona kama kuna mambo yanaendelea kwa mwili. Mimi serikali hata ingenisaidia kulipa hiyo pesa ya NHF ingefurahi sana. Kwa sababu mimi sina kazi ya permanent. Natafuta barua yangu na kura alafu nyingine ile inabaki naenda na lisa hiyo ya NHF. Sasa hata wakinisaidia na hiyo pesa ya NHF na sasa kusoma ni asante. Unahitajika kwenda hospitali kwa kulingana muda gani? Once by every two months ama moja kulingana na vile mgonjwa inaendelea kwa mwili. Ikienda juu unaenda kwa mwezi mmoja. Alafu ikienda chini unaweza kuenda hata baada ya wiki ya miezi miwili. Ni kulingana na na mwili. Ha, na nashukuru sana kuweza kutukaribisha nyumbani kwako na kupata kuzungumza na sisi na pia kuweza kuhamasisha watu. Many cases of non-communicable diseases are the consequences of lifestyle choices that we make. Why did we choose Meru County to highlight on non-communicable diseases? Non-communicable diseases are many, but in this episode we shall focus on cancer. Today we are at Meru Teaching and Referral Hospital. So, we want to speak to some of the professionals here wanting to know why Meru County has many cases of non-communicable diseases. Why Meru and not Embu, not Nyeri? Why don't they have this kind of cancers? So we want to see, is it the genetics that predisposes or is it something else that we are yet to? pick out. That is what we have been grappling for the last, I think, three to five years, trying to figure out why Meru County. There are so many anecdotal papers that have been citing Meru being a mirror drawing zone, chewing mirror, but in all fairness, there is no concrete data that actually points that Mira chewing actually causes uh, any of the cancers that we see. We've seen a steady increase in the number of cancer patients from all over, not just within Meru County, but also from neighboring counties. Our patients, when they come the first time, they have to go through counseling sessions both palliative and nutrition. And this is important so that they're able to know exactly what they're suffering from. So that's what we call disclosure. What, how they're going to be treated, the form of treatment, the duration of the treatment, the side effects of the treatment, and how to manage those side effects. We pay a lot of emphasis on the nutritional component so that when our patients live here, there is continuity so that when they go home, we emphasize on them feeding as regularly as possible so that the medicine can be effective in their system. Some of the treatments that we offer to our patients are really costly ranging from as low as 5,000 to as high as 100,000. And NHIF caters for that fully. That, in a way, gives us hope that our patients will live to see the next day. So NHIF for us is one of those things that, in, as a practitioner, it's a must. For all my patients, it's a must. If you don't have it, go get it. If you can't get it, find a way of getting it, but have it. There are certain things that we can avoid, which in a way can help 
prevent or keep away some of the things, some of the predisposing factors, like just eating healthy, having a vegetarian diet. Not that you stop eating meat, but you can alternate the meat products. A lot of vegetables, uh, drinking a lot of water, exercise, regular checkups. That way we are able to pick out early lesions and treat them early, whereas we are also able to prevent some of the cancers that come up as a result of overindulgence in some of the predisposing factors I've alluded to. It is you know, public knowledge that uh, Meru County appears to have a very high prevalence of, of, of cancer cases. We have registered ourselves, we have a, a cancer clinic uh, running at the Meru Teaching and Referral Hospital and the oncology clinic for which we run um, a database for cancer or cancer registry. In the year 2021, for example, the cancer clinic attended to 4,000. 506 patients, of which 545 were newly diagnosed with cancer, meaning the other 4,000 are patients who are on follow-up from the previous previous years. And uh, basically that translates to every month that cancer clinic uh, attends or does diagnosis for 45 new patients every single month. Yes, there is the narrative that maybe there is something that makes Meru a hotspot for cancer, but I think also the availability and the access that we have availed in this county for cancer care, for cancer diagnostics, would obviously make the, the numbers go higher. Remember this clinic serves patients from the neighboring counties, Taraka Nithi, Isiolo, Marsabit, and, the, and parts of Laikipia. As long as we continue having a robust clinic that handles cancer patients, our numbers will continue to be higher. You remember UHC, the C in UHC is coverage. It's about coverage in terms of ensuring services are reaching the person down to the village. And we have tried to improve that coverage by ensuring that we have dispensaries, health centers, level four hospitals that are operational, that are well equipped. With support from AMREF as a partner with Meru County, we have been able to, to map out the areas where there are indigents or people who cannot afford to, to pay these uh, NHIF costs. And we as a county are going to pay for that NHIF. We used to send all our patients to Kenyatta National Hospital. Today, if you go to a majority of the county referral hospitals, you will find some form of cancer care, be it diagnostics, be it treatment. Today, Meru County has two oncologists, medical oncologists working in that clinic. We have about five oncology nurses working in that clinic. We have doctors who are not oncologists working in that clinic. We have clinical and oncology pharmacists working in that clinic. And we have set aside today a, a separate area, an annex within the hospital, where we have sourced for funding through the national government, uh, through the World Bank. And in the coming months, we shall start a con construction of uh, an ultra-modern cancer centre by the end of this year we shall be able to offer a radiotherapy and that now becomes the entire spectrum of services that can be offered for cancer patients. tunazungumza na wakazi wa Meru kupata kujua kama washaitenga muda aidha akiwa mgonjwa ama labda yeye si mgonjwa lakini kupata muda wa kwenda kufanywa ile medical check up kumbuka show ni maisha and health na mimi ni mtaalamu kosia natakuwa tunazunguka kila wakati tunazunguka kila sehemu watu wapate kujua wacha nisumbue hapa kiongozi kiongozi naomba kusumbua kidogo osha ipata muda ukasema tu wacha niende medical check up labda mimi ni mgonjwa labda mimi si mgonjwa lakini wacha niingie medical check up sasa haifanya hivyo sababu gani as king kwa mgonjwa sasa nitaenda kufanya nini check up tu check up sasa ni saa kama uko fine tutaenda check up ya ni eh huwa anachukua muda unajua saa kulingana na miaka vile mtu anaendelea ukiwa sasa ile uko young ushughuliki lakini after 40s unafaa ushughulike sababu inasemekana after 40s ile ile immune inaanza kutelemka jaanza jaenda sababu gani sababu sisi kimwe wangu ikiwa na kasoro 
Jijaanza kusema kweli. Mara ya mwisho kwenda hospitali ilikuwa lini? 78. Ah, sijaenda, sijaenda. Sababu gani? Eh? Kwa sababu gani? Sababu sina pesa, sijaenda hata na mbeza tu dawa ya Panadol na mbeza tu na kazi. Eh. I am with Mze Alex Nyaga here, and his story is similar to that of Mr. Laban Kaburu. Uh, kwanza mene ngependa kujua, hii safari ilianzaje, hadi ukajipata hivi leo hivi. Kwanzia mwenzi wa 2021, nikaanza mm, kula chakula, nikula kidoo, hata bibi ya kakua na kula zamu kwa na skuli kutoka hapo ni nienda hospitali ya chuka jendo ni kafimio kangaliwa ni kandikio barua ni hende kliniki ni kaenda hospitali ya konsulata chuka ni ya admitted for one week kaniambia Niende meo, niangalio kwa sababu nilikani, nagula chakula, alavu na tabika. Kwa hivyo nilienda huko, kafimo, alavu nika weko machini, kwa... Alavu nika enda huko. Katolewa kakitu huko, nika ambiwa kataenda nini, na robi. Alavu after two weeks, nika ambiwa, Niende ni hile hile zote. Tambiwa, ya hile hile wapalisho. Ya tumba. Ya nikaenda wapalisho ni ya kwanza. Nikaenda ya pili. Ate ya tatu. Nikaambiwa hata hile ni uontwa. Ta kuja hapo kwa hama. Ata hapo nikafanyo wapalisho ni hile. Nikuwa na tumia hile 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 hile. Kambiwa sasa pesa zangu, nina majizika. Yengine, shuguri yeli. Toka hapo, tukafanya alami. Tukaliba hiyo pesa, nina kazua nimbani tena. Toka hapo sasa, nikawekewa hii mpira, na kula. Kwa nitubelewa hapa, sasa mina wakwe chakula hapo, na mate inatokea hapa. Mwishowe, ukani miambia wa yutume mbeo. Yungu ama kani, ama yungu, kuna mazika. Kasa mina mbelea tu kuenda kilili. Katika shuguli zako za kuenda hospitali na kufanyo matibabu, umweza kujifunza nini kuhusu ugonjo wako? Anatemu walu. Ya kiona tabu, hainda kuna itali ya laka. Haitibiwe. Angaribu ni nini. Ya. Maisha ni... To gauge the prevalence of non-communicable diseases, we ask Kenyans if they knew someone affected. I don't know if there is anyone who is afraid of the people. I don't know if there is anyone who is afraid of the people. Eh, kama ni ile hospitali tuko nayo hapa hizi cancer center wanajaribu kutafuta tu vile wana uwezo Evidently non communicable diseases are a major class of ailments affecting Kenyans Is our healthcare infrastructure well prepared to deal with them The aspiration towards universal healthcare is what informed the rebranding of the former National Hospital Insurance Fund to the National Health Insurance Fund. It was not merely a change of name. It came with enhanced capacity to finance public health with better quality, easier access and affordability for all as the guiding principles. Cancer treatment centers are now spread across the country unlike a few years ago when the only facilities treating cancer were found in Nairobi. Thank you, Mutala, for a very interactive session. Now, the people of Meru have very many questions with regard to non-communicable diseases and especially cancer.
Time for us to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be hosting expert panelists in front of an audience to talk more about non-communicable diseases. You're watching Maisha Ni Health. Maisha Ni, Maisha Ni Health. Maisha Ni. Welcome back. Time for us to have that discussion with the experts. Maisha Ni, Maisha Ni. This is yet another edition of Maisha Ni Health our continued coverage of universal health coverage, the progress and achievements of the same, and discussions with the people behind this as envisioned in the government's Big Four agenda. Today, we will have a special focus on cancer care and awareness. And we're having this discussion right here in Meru, and we'll have a panel discussion uh, with three guests. I will introduce them uh, shortly and in front of a live audience. I'll begin with my immediate left. We have Dr. Mwenda Valerian, an epidemiologist uh, from the National Cancer Control Program, Department of Non-Communicable Diseases, Ministry of Health. Next to Dr. Mwenda, we have Ruth Muya from the National Cancer Institute of Kenya. And last but not least, we do have James Keremi. He is a Chief Officer of Health, Meru County. Good morning, uh, lady and gentlemen, and karibu sana. Later on in this session, we'll be fielding questions from members of our audience, but before that, let's have a brief discussion to my panelists. Probably expound on what exactly non-communicable diseases are and which other uh, conditions or illnesses fall under this, apart from cancer. Let's start with you, Dr. Ari. Some people refer to them as chronic conditions. Basically, these are conditions that cannot be transmitted, cannot be passed from one person to the next. Uh, as opposed to what we call communicable diseases, which are conditions that can be passed from one person to the next. Cancer is not the only non-communicable disease that is there. Actually, there are four major um, groups of diseases that constitute what we call non-communicable diseases. Cancer is one of them. The second is what we call cardiovascular diseases. These are diseases that affect the heart and the blood vessels. The third is what we call uh, a diabetes, diabetes, what some people term in uh, Swahili, ugonjwa wa sukari, um, ugonjwa wa kisuka, ama kisukari. The fourth is what we call chronic respiratory diseases or chronic lung conditions. Those are the four main types of non-communicable diseases. However, there are many other types of non-communicable diseases uh, that uh, affect people across the world and also in our republic. How prepared is a public health system? to deal with this non-communicable disease? I think you need to probably look at it uh, uh, twofold. Is there infrastructure and is there human resource? And, and I think um, if you look broadly in that sense, then you would ask is there a human resource capacity in the counties, in Meru County, to deal with non-communicable diseases? Yes. So do we have um, capability for diagnostics in this county for the non-communicable diseases, I would say yes. All the way from cancer, diabetes, uh, hypertension. Of course, there are um, areas in, within county or the smaller facilities, level two facilities, who may have limited capacity for uh, uh, some areas in terms of diagnostics, but that does not mean that our patients do not have access to diagnostics when and if need be. Is there medication available for cancer? What, if, if at all there is, what kind of medication is it? The approaches of cancer treatment, of course, are, are various, um, uh, starting from um, use of chemotherapy or drugs to treat cancer, uh, use of uh, radiation, and use of surgery, among others. I can say we are good as a country to respond to cancer in terms of treatment to a very great extent, you know, comparing from uh, what has happened in the last 10 years. Of course, there are challenges. Yeah, uh, nevertheless, the issues of availability of uh, medication and affordability of the same. Within a very short time, we should uh, be able to treat all cancers in the country, and no Kenyan should be able to leave the country seeking for treatment elsewhere. It is possible and the country is on the right track. Health is a uh, devolved uh, a service, but the ministry uh, still oversees all these services. Uh, is there awareness on availability of uh, cancer care and access to it available to this community? As a, as a program in the ministry, we've actually realized in the last two or so years that we don't just need to set up these centers. We don't just need to bring all these equipment. We need to go out there and find a way of communicating effectively uh, to the populace to know that these services are available and to even empower them to uptake these services. Not just on treatment, across the entire cancer control continuum, starting from 
prevention to what you call screening, meaning going for checkup when you have no symptoms, to early diagnosis, then to uh, diagnosis and treatment. But we need to inform our populace what is available and where it's available and how they can be linked up. The second aspect of financial access, that's I think a major area of focus now. And we've been working on various initiatives to reduce the cost of cancer care in this country. One of them is uh, riding on the UHC discussion. And as a program, we've ensured that key aspects of cancer control, right from screening to diagnosis, is captured within the UHC package. The second aspect is actually working with the NHF to restructure the um, cancer packages that are covered, all right? So I'd want to request the people who are here, communicate to people to, for the time, to, for the moment, to pick up NHIF. Because you know soon it will be covering the entire um, uh, array of cancer control services from diagnosis to treatment and even what we call rehabilitative care. What can I do to stop myself from getting cancer? We have so many risk factors for cancer. There are some that you can do something about, there are some that you cannot do much about, all right? So the ones you can do something about, you call them uh, modifiable, meaning we can act on them. Unfortunately, they contribute to around 40%, all right? There are many other factors, things like age, things like ex exposure to uh, uh, radiation in the universe, all right? Things like our genetic makeup, who we are as people. We see different cancers appearing more among black people than white people and Asians. There's nothing that we can do about that. We can't change our race, we can't change our sex, okay? But there are a few things that we can do something about. And those are the things that we encourage all of us to do something about. There are four main modifiable risk factors for cancer, for my friend. One of them is use of tobacco. The second major risk factor for um, cancer is abnormal use of alcohol. The third common uh, risk factor for cancer that we can do something about them is inadequate physical activity. Okay? We are assuming what we call Western diet that is heavy on um, carbohydrates and fine, what we call fine carbohydrates. So these are factors that we can do something about. There is something else we need to do. It's not just avoiding those uh, factors. There are other concepts of cancer control. There is something we call screening. Okay? Screening means being checked for certain types of cancer before you have symptoms. There is a second concept called early diagnosis. Early diagnosis means if you have a symptom that um, persists, especially that persists for some time, get a quick medical checkup. So these are the two things that we need to uh, focus on in addition to living what we call better lifestyle. Doctor Mwen, uh, Mwenda said, mentioned the fact that uh, some cancers have to do with age or even gender. Uh, but the question is, uh, can the youth also be afflicted by cancer? We have over 3,000 cases uh, of children diagnosed with cancer every single year in Kenya. And the youth also catch cancer again. Quite of it is affiliated to the childhood cancer, so that is persons below uh, 19 years of age uh, also catch cancer as well. But of course, as years pass, the chances of developing more cancers in increases, uh, and therefore that's why the age factor comes in. Uh, we see uh, different more cancers in the elderly as opposed to the young persons. Um, and the other reason is cancer takes time to manifest. For example, cancer of the cervix, which is preventable among uh, the youth and the children through vaccination, can take about 20 years to develop. So perhaps then it starts from age 20, and by the time it's diagnosed as cancer, then uh, the person is around 40, 35 years, and that's why then the youth may uh, look at it like it's not their cancer, but if interventions are done um, uh, at the early age, you know, change of uh, risky sexual behaviors for cancer of the cervix, particularly uh, vaccination against HVV for ages nine years to 15 years, girls in Kenya, uh, then would be moving towards uh, eradicating cancer of the cervix, uh, of course, coupled with the screening and the early detection and the treatment, we could eliminate that particular cancer. We've seen in some communities, stigma is indeed a bigger problem, even affecting access uh, and availability of services. Uh, how much of it is a problem here in Meru? From my position, I think there isn't an issue of stigma in Meru County when we talk about cancer. In Meru County is very lucky that they are managed to overcome the issue of stigma and discrimination. It's totally different elsewhere. Uh, in various other communities in Kenya, including the community I come from, cancer is seen as a curse. 
cancer is seen as, uh, you know, someone sinned or did something against uh, God. And also cancer is seen as witchcraft. And therefore, there is a lot of stigma around cancer. And people don't understand the condition quite well. So cancers of the reproductive system are highly stigmatized and are surrounded by, you know, cultural norms and taboos. And therefore, people are not willing to come out. Uh, for treatment and care. Yes, you're still watching Maisha in Health, our continued uh, special series of programs highlighting the progress and achievements of universal health coverage as envisioned in the government's Big Four agenda. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll be fielding questions from our audience. Welcome back. You're still watching Maisha in Health. As promised, we now take questions from the audience. Tupenda katika maswali yani ya non communicable diseases yani magonjwa ambayo kama ya pipopunda magonjwa ya kisukari na mengine zaidi kama vile saratani kwa hivyo imefika wakati wa kuuliza maswali kuna screen ya kansa watu wa meru wanaenda wapi na kama kuna mali wanaenda kama ni meru general ni free au ni pesa yes screening is available Sometimes when you go for outreaches, or you can come for screening at the hospitals, most of the time it's free. Mikakati zipi tumezichukua hili kusaidia hawa hawa wanaupata magunjo za cancer ndio wasipokuwa ya emotionally distressed. One one thing that we we worked so hard on and I think we were able to achieve this last year is actually passing a palliative care policy. This is the very first time this country has a policy directing how palliative care is supposed to be offered. Now we are able to take action. For instance, to make um, uh, um, some of the palliative care support services for cancer available across the country. So now we are moving towards making these medicines more available and even, even having more um, members of, of, of our healthcare system, more cadres, being able to administer these medicines so that they are available. Um, the other aspect is uh, supportive care, rehabilitative uh, uh, um, equipment, which initially, again, were not covered, whether by NHF or also by other private insurances. So that's something we're working on. You know, things like stomach bags, things like stents, devices that are used to low, like people have an acromastectomy for breast cancer. So we've ensured that that is captured actually within uh, um, the UHC uh, package, all right? So that we're able to support these patients across the continuum explain to the audience uh, how NHRF caters for cancer treatment. Treatment for some cancers is different from others. So initially NHRF and a single um, um, cover, you know, with specific uh, cycles being covered. So we've been working with them. They requested us that what they need is guidance on what needs to be covered for who. And I'm happy to report that for childhood cancers, we're able to have that advisory and share it with the NHRF. So we are very positive that even before um, the wide rollout of UHC, that NHF will be restructuring the oncology package and it will cover everything from diagnosis to uh, treatment to staging and even supportive care. Why is it so difficult for the government to set up a factory or a form of manufacturing center to be able to manufacture cancer drugs locally? Why are we still importing drugs from India? and all these other countries? First of all, it's very, very expensive to manufacture these uh, uh, products. So they do focus on uh, economies of scale. So they're saying that, for instance, they cannot come and set up a factory to just produce for Kenya. The consumption will not be enough to um, uh, take care of uh, the investment in that manufacturing. Still better is, again, exploring possibilities of uh, procurement directly from the manufacturers to cast the cost of the agencies uh, who procure and drugs on behalf of the patients, on behalf of the government. If that can be explored, then the cost of uh, the cans and drugs would come uh, quite low. And another area that can also uh, help uh, control the um, cost of cans and drugs is the establishment of the ma um, maximum um, uh, uh, retail uh, selling price, uh, capping the prices for recommended prices for drugs. That is an area that is a low-lying uh, fruit for the country. Thank you so much. Uh, helping us understand more about the level of awareness and cancer care 
in Kenya as a whole and in specific uh, Meru County. Thank you so much for your questions as well, and we hope that you got them answered. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another edition of My Shine Health, a continued series of programs highlighting the uh, achievements and progress of universal health coverage, of course, as envisioned in the government's Big Four agenda. My shiny, my shiny health. Maishani Health takes another break. When we come back, we get a view from the Ministry of Health Command Center with the Cabinet Secretary. Maishani Health. Maishani As you've heard, non-communicable diseases form a huge part of the disease burden in Kenya. Now, this is what the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Health, Mutahi Kagwe, had to say about this. The burden of uh, non-communicable diseases in the country is driven by socio-economic and lifestyle factors uh, such as obesity, physical inactivity, and unhealthy diets. A majority of Kenyans are consuming fast food, spending hours sitting behind desks and gazing at electronic devices. This shift in lifestyle means that a lot less people are exercising. Advancement in diagnosis services also contribute to the identification and reporting of new cases that previously were not reported. Meru County is under the ministry's radar due to its high burden of cancer cases. This is perhaps the reason why the question of what the government is doing to ensure access to treatment and reject reduction of cost of cancer treatment featured quite prominently among um, participants in today's uh, episode recorded in Meru. To reduce the burden of cancer, we have strengthened primary health care systems and the cancer referral health system to link primary health facilities to secondary and tertiary health facilities. Additionally, we have also enhanced advocacy to increase awareness on the disease and promote healthy lifestyle choices. Cancer screening services are available at level two and, and, and level three facilities at no cost. We have also established four new centers to offer radiation oncology. These include Kenyatta National Hospital, Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital, Kenyatta University Teaching, Referral and Research Hospital, and the recently launched uh, Nakuru. Um, teaching hospital. Plans are underway also to open similar facilities in the coast, Kisi and Upper Eastern. The essential health benefit package under the National Health Insurance Fund will deliver a complete healthcare continuum including primary healthcare services and services for non-communicable diseases. Another plus is the launch of the National Palliative Care Policy. Health workforce are being trained on patient counseling, among other interventions. We are also working to provide palliative care to improve the quality of life of patients with life-limiting diseases and their families. This is being done through the prevention and relief of suffering by means of early identification, correct assessment, and treatment of pain, as well as other problems such as physical, psychosocial, and spiritual demands at all facilities. So NHIF is in the process also of reviewing its treatment care plans to cover cancer treatment more comprehensively with uh, technical guidance from the ministry. We also have plans to integrate non-communicable disease prevention information in school health programs. Treatment of cancer and other non-communicable diseases can be prevented if we enhance physical activity, eat healthy foods, avoid tobacco, avoid alcohol. These are the four major risk factors driving the increase in non-communicable uh, diseases. Remember, Maisha ni health. Protect your health promote life. Cancer, diabetes, 
and hypertension. These are just some of the non-communicable diseases that continue to afflict many Kenyans. As you've heard from the experts, there's something you can do about it. Now, universal health coverage continues to assist many in overcoming these challenges, as you've seen in some of the stories that we've shared. This has been Maishani Health, where we continue highlighting the achievements and progress of UHC as envisioned in the government's Big Four agenda. On today's episode, we discussed non-communicable diseases with a special focus on cancer. Join us next week as we bring you Maishani Health from the county of Kisumu. My name is Fred. Maishani, Maishani Health. I work day and night so that I may see the light. In daily pursuit of wealth, never knowing that my health is not a guarantee, that it needs a warranty, such as NHIF, of which is what I did, and now I sleep without worry. Shani, my shani, hey.